Okay guys, as you can see, Christmas crafting is in full swing. I almost took the time to clean my craft room tonight before I filmed this intro, but then I just knew I've been working all day. If I clean this room first, I am gonna be too tired to do my intro video, and I really, really wanna get this project out for you guys. Um, today we're gonna be doing a Christmas project using all Dollar Tree items, and it is so cute. I made a fall version of this a couple months ago that I absolutely fell in love with. It was one of those projects where I just took a couple, I took a plaque and I took this little wood farmhouse truck and I kind of had an idea where I was gonna go with it, but I wasn't totally sure. And I ended up absolutely loving how it turned out. And so I was so bummed out that I hadn't filmed that video for you. And so I decided I have to do a Christmas version of it. I will put a picture of my fall version of it at the end of this video and you can let me know in the comments below which one you like better. So without further ado, we're gonna jump into this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure and subscribe. And if you wanna make sure that YouTube lets you know anytime I have a new video, just click the bell next to subscribe and they will let you know. They'll notify you anytime I have a new video posted. So again, thank you so much for being here, you guys. I just appreciate the kind comments. I appreciate my sweet followers. So let's just jump in and get started. So these are the trucks that I started with. I got these at the Dollar Tree. Uh, they were a little hard for me to find. Once I found a couple, it was really hard for me to find more of them, but they kind of seem to come in and then they sell out and then they come in. So hopefully you'll be able to find one of these at the Dollar Tree. Um, the first thing I did was take off the doors and the little rims to the tires. Um, I was really careful and used a a putty knife to pull these off. You just kind of get the putty knife underneath the edge of one and then just slowly kind of start to pull them off. You want to be really careful though because I did break one of my doors in half trying to get it off. So just be really careful and do it slowly. And um, once I just realized I needed to do, be really slow and careful about it, the others weren't very difficult to do. So then what I'm doing here is I'm painting my truck and um, here I'm using the crimson red um, which I love this color red it's by Waverly it's a chalk paint um, you've, you you um, could com totally use um, acrylic paint I like to use chalk paint just because it covers quicker and easier um, with less coat so I'm using the chalk paint here but you can totally use crimson um, um, I'm sorry, you could totally use uh, acrylic paints as well. So in this video, I'm going to actually be working on a couple different trucks. One's red and one's white. Um, I was actually making about five of these at a time and I kind of go back and forth between the red and white one. They were the ones I was going to do and um, complete for this project, but I just wasn't sure if I wanted red or white on my finished product. So. Um, I do um, kind of go back and forth in this video. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find a scrapbook paper and I love these 6x6 six six paper pads. Um, there are all kinds of brands of these. I just really, I have a lot of the Echo Park brand. Um, but the reason I really like using those 6x6 six six papers is because you get a, a smaller print um, on my red truck, I end up using this 12 by 12 plaid that you see up here in the right hand corner. Um, but on all my other trucks, I went with something from one of those six by six paper pads. And I, I just think they work really good if you're mod, mod podging something small because the print is smaller. Um, on some prints, if you're working with a 12 by 12 piece of paper and you're putting it on something that's small, it's really hard to get um, an overall picture of the of the print because um, it's just a lot larger than it is in one of these six by six paper pads. Um, so here I am uh, with this black and red uh, um, uh, paper and this was out of my six by six paper pack. But here I am and I am just, hold on just a second, my little puppy is barking. Okay, so I'm just, sanding these edges with this little tool. I absolutely love this little tool. Um, I can link this down in the description. Um, I bought this tool several months ago and it's just great for sanding little tiny 
um, projects. Um, it's it just works great. So once I kind of sand those edges, which is, by the way, my favorite way of getting my edges really um, uh, even and nice. I just think it looks really good when you kind of have your paper be a little bit bigger and then sand the edges to get it exact. I, here I'm going in with an X-Acto knife and I am uh, cutting out all of those. Uh, I cut out the little door handle area and then the little window and just be really careful when you're using an exacto knife. Those are sharp little knives. Um, so now I'm gonna take my doors and my little rims and I'm going to um, just put a little bit of black shading on the edges of them. I just feel like this gives it a little more detail, a little more interest. When you add just these little detail um, things with your um, with you know with paint or to any of your projects I I know like a lot of times I'll watch videos on YouTube and I know a lot of people are you know they're 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 trying to make things quick and and I know they sometimes see some of that little detail work as unnecessary but I just really feel like it adds a lot of character to my projects and I feel like it just kind of gives it a professional finished project so I really like that detail work and you can see here I'm adding a little bit of paint to the edges of this truck and I'm gonna go around the entire truck and add uh, this uh, this is a gray that I'm using here I think believe this is elephant gray by Waverly and I just add this um, little edge to my truck and and again I just feel like it really adds a lot of character I feel like it just gives it some extra dimension and I anywhere I can do that any of my projects I try to do that um, here I'm adding a little shading because like I said you can kind of see where those rims were attached and so I'm going around and just adding a little shading to um, where I'm going to be gluing those um, rims back on top and again I just I think that adds a little more detail to my project so the next thing I am going to do here is I am going to paint my wheels and you can totally see the outline of where the wheel was so I just kind of follow that little line and um, I'm using Waverly chalk paint and ink and I'm just gonna add that black paint to my wheels you don't have to worry if you don't get it exactly um, straight up on the top part because you're gonna be gluing your rim down and you're not gonna be able to see that edge anyways um, but it's 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 really it's it's pretty simple to do and I believe I only needed one coat of this ink and um, I'm just going in in here to the edges make sure I've got my edges painted really well and then I'm gonna take this little pouncer that's what I call these little stencil brushes little pouncers and I'm using weight weight I'm using white Waverly chalk paint and it just kind of gives me the size and shape I need for the middle of my tires so I'm just gonna kind of I just kind of press that little pouncer straight down and um, if it doesn't kind of imprint all the way I just kind of twist that little circle and give myself the white uh, middles to my tires. And then I found a paintbrush that had kind of a little bit bigger of an end. And I'm just gonna put a little dot right in the middle. And that, again, I'm using that Elephant from Waverly. And I just put a little dot in the middle of my tires. And I think they just turned out adorable. Here I'm just highlighting uh, those tires, giving them a little white paint around the rims of them and now I'm moving on here to my my red truck and I am going to now glue all the pieces uh, down onto my truck I love to use a combination of e6000 glue and hot glue um, e6000 glue is just so strong and it keeps everything in place and it doesn't come off um, but the hot glue kind of gives you that instant stick uh, so I just use a combination of both of them when I glue these pieces down. And then I'm going in with some Mod Podge to cover my truck. Um, I like to use satin Mod Podge for my um, finishes on top. I will use whatever Mod Podge when I'm gluing things down or, 
or Mod Podging paper down, but for my finishing work and to kind of go over thing, I really like satin. It's just, it's not super glossy, but it's not that flat. So um, I, use, I use satin a lot. And I'm just going over this entire truck with this satin Mod Podge and I just feel like it kind of gives it all a cohesive look and just kind of brings everything together. So I just put a generous amount of this Mod Podge on it and then I will set it aside and let this dry. Now we're gonna make the bed of the truck and I use these little crates that I get from the Dollar Tree. You can actually um, do two trucks out of one of these crates because you're gonna cut about a third of it um, out. And I just use a, a little hand saw to do that. I first went in with this big miter saw and it was just a little too much saw for this little project. So I end up going in with this little tiny um, little crafting saw and again I will link uh, that in my description below um, I but with that little saw was less than ten dollars but I just go through here and I start sawing and I'm, I'm kind of trying to get my saw lines in the same place um, and I actually end up cutting one of these sides a slightly crooked and you'll see it here I believe it's this side right here it's not perfectly straight up and down but don't worry about that because I end up just kind of filling it in with, filling it in with hot glue when I hot glue it to my sign um, but I would say this took me about three minutes to get this crate completely sawed um, you can see I'm kind of going through one of the slats at the bottom so I really just had to saw through the sides and it was it was actually really easy to to saw through this. Anybody can do it, you can do it, I promise. And I'm just measuring that to see where I'm gonna glue it. And I realized that I've got that little hole in the window. So I cut out a piece of cardstock and I'm just gonna glue that to the back of that window so that you can't see my crate through the window. I just cut out a little square, uh, used my hot glue gun, my little Sherbonder hot glue gun, which I absolutely adore, and I just glued that down uh, to my truck. And now I am going to take care of that truck bed. So what I'm gonna do with this truck is I am going to use my ebony um, stain, and I'm gonna stain the back of it. You could paint the back of it. I have painted them red, black, white, um, I used a, a dark walnut stain on one of them. You can do whatever you want that will coordinate with the color you've painted the truck and with the scrapbook paper that you have Mod Podged onto the detailing. Um, but I went with the ebony stain for this. I love the stain. I have been using this a lot since I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of transforming my kitchen decorations into the white and black buffalo plaid. So this ebony stain works well with a lot of the different projects that I've been making. Um, but I went ahead, stained that, and then of course you wipe up all the excess stain. And that is what my little truck is gonna look like. Isn't that so cute? I just, uh, I absolutely love this. So this is a harvest sign that I had. And I'm gonna be hanging a little sign from the bottom of it, so I don't fill in those little holes. I just cut out the jute um, twine that was in it. And I am just gonna get this Harvest Blessings um, sign off the top. It's got like a little 3D sign, and I'm using my um, uh, putty knife here to just kind of scrape that off and kind of left a thick layer of uh, cardboard so I'm just going through and trying to get those off in chunks um, they have signs this shape for Christmas um, but when I first started this project my Dollar Tree didn't have very many of its Christmas signs in 
and so I just went ahead and used this uh, harvest sign but they do have Christmas signs now that are the same shape I really like this shape I, th I think it's a little interesting um, I, I think it gives a little me detail uh, instead of using just like a rectangular shape I, I just feel like this sign gives a little detail and I really like it so I tried to get as much of that cardboard off as I could and now I'm using this little Dollar Tree tub that I keep in my craft room and this is kind of what I try to sand my little craft projects into just because it kind of helps keep all of my um, the dust that you get from sanding it just kind of falls into the bottom of this little tube and now I'm going to go through and paint all of this with Waverly White and I ended up doing two coats of paint on this sign to make sure I got everything covered. This little ceremony pointer sign is from the Dollar Tree as well. You'll find this in the um, picture frame section. It will not be in the wedding section. It's always in the picture frame section. And I used this little arrow sign. I took off the legs to it and I sanded that all down. And then I ended up painting it as well with two coats of the Waverly White chalk paint. Now I'm going around the edges of this little arrow with my um, little um, tough, it's just a really firm stencil brush that I take most of the paint off with and just go around and just add that little detailing. You can see that here. I'm gonna add some little streaks into the middle of it as well. And I'm gonna do the same thing um, to that main sign as well. And again, I just think these things just kind of give it a little extra detail. It just kind of takes everything up a notch from um, just looking solid painted. But uh, this is really all personal preference. If you would prefer to keep it just solid painted, you could totally do that and your project would be just as cute. Um, I just personally love all the little detail work. Um, I have used these signs and I have um, measured out two inches all the way up it and drawn in some shiplap lines and made these signs look like shiplap. Um, but because I've done that so much, I just decided I wanted to do just little kind of black streaks back and forth uh, across it just to give it a little texture. Um, I did not make it look like it had um, wood shiplap um, pieces across it. I just did this little streaking across it and I was fine with it. I thought it turned out cute. And again, I've just, I've done a lot of shiplap, so I try not to do the same thing on everything I do. And um, I just did these streaks instead. You can see I realized the red one is gonna look way better than the white one on top of the white sign. So I did um, end up using the red truck for this project. And uh, for the white truck, I ended up using a kind of a different size um, plaque to put it on and I ended up staining it, the ebony stain. But for this one that I'm doing here with you guys, I'm using this white plaque with the red truck. I went in and with my Cricut and I created the words that I wanted to go on the little sign that hangs from the bottom. And if you're interested in me making a video with how to kind of create your own wording, on a Cricut and how to work in design space to create this type of thing. I'm happy to do that. I don't typically add that to my videos because I feel like there are so many videos out there. If you just um, search in YouTube for um, design space or how to design space, um, creating signs in design space, you will get a lot of videos that actually show you the software and just kind of how to manipulate the software program to make whatever sign, whatever size you want it to be. Um, so, but again, if you're interested in me making a video like that, I'm happy to do that. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just using acrylic paint and I'm gonna go stencil um, my words here. And in the beginning, I had, I had wanted to do all my words in red and I end up adding these little tiny um, stenciled Christmas trees between fir, spruce, and pine. And then I was gonna do those in green, but I wasn't paying real close attention and I just started stenciling the words in green. Um, and I was a little um, ways through this project when I realized I was, oh crud, I wanted to do those in red. And anyways, I ended up doing it backwards and it wasn't you know, bad enough that I felt like I needed to redo it. So I didn't redo it and I just ended up making these little trees. Um, as you'll see here, I just put these little trees down and I ended up making these red 
which I know uh, red Christmas trees are a little odd, but I just wanted them to be some kind of um, alternate color from what my stenciled words were. So I just went with it and made these red and I think it turned out really cute. And for this paint, I am using the Crimson Red by Waverly as well. And I actually had a little bit of green still left on my little stencil brush, and so it is kind of a little darker um, red, but I, I like that. I mean, I purposely didn't wash my brush because I wanted it to be a little darker and not quite as bright of a red. So I um, get those done, and I'm gonna peel off my stencil, and voila, my little sign. Um, that's gonna hang from this is all um, completed and I just I thought it really turned out really super cute. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to glue the bed of my truck, this little crate, to the back of my truck. And again I'm using that mixture of E6000 glue and hot glue. E6000 gives it a really super strong hold. Um, the hot glue makes it hold right now. If you just use E6000 glue, you have to just really like not touch your project and let it sit like overnight. But if you use it in combination with the hot glue, excuse my head getting in the way there. Um, if you use it in combination of the hot glue, it kind of gives it that right now stick. And you can see here, I used a couple of my clamps that I got. I got a really cool clamp set at um, Harbor Freight here in town. It was less than $10 and I got like a five different sizes and I wanna say 12 different clamps. Um, so I use those a lot in my crafting. So here I'm just trying to figure out, I'm going to need to drill holes in the top of this little sign that match up with the holes that were already in uh, the, that top plaque. So I'm just making little marks about a quarter inch down from the edge of uh, that little arrow. And this is where I'm going to drill my holes so that I can hang my sign. And you guys, don't be afraid of stuff like drilling holes um, or using saws, that type of thing. You know what? Anybody can do it. Um, you can watch YouTube videos on how to do it if you're intimidated by it. But you know what? Anybody can do these things. Um, it took me 30 seconds. I ended up realizing I needed to use a larger bit on my, on my drill because the first one I started with was just really too tiny for my jute to go through easily. Here I've, now I've glued the truck onto the sign and I let it sit with clamps as well. These are bigger clamps, but I let it sit with clamps as well and it just gave it a really firm attachment uh, to my sign. So I'm getting towards the end now, getting ready to just put all the fun finishing touches on it and um, get this uh, project finished. So I took out one of these little like, um, greenery covered pipe cleaners that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna make a little wreath for the door of my truck. And, but I need it to be, if I made a circle out of this, it would just be way, way too bushy for um, the door and for it to look like a realistic wreath. So I went through, I took this pipe cleaner um, with the greenery on it. I went through and I cut down all of that pipe, pipe cleaner. So it's really, really short. So when I um, take it, I'm gonna see, I'm just cut a little piece of it and then I'm just gonna make a circle out of it and I'm gonna make a little uh, wreath to hang on the door. If I had left all of that greenery on it, it would have just been like way too bushy and you would probably hardly even be able to tell it's a circle. It would have just looked like a big wad of greenery. So I cut that greenery down um, to make a little wreath. Again, I love detail work. I love adding the little details. 
um, and here I am. These are, you can buy these little trees in a packet of two from the Dollar Tree. And this is what I'm using as my little trees that are being hauled in the back of my truck. And so that they fit in better and kind of lay nicely in there, I cut um, the backs of them flat and they just, they go in the truck so much better that way. And I'm just checking out my little wreath. I just love all the details. I love all the different textures with the little wreath and the trees and the, and the, the little crate trunk. I just, I love this project because of all of the different items that I'm using. I am cutting down here. This is a ribbon that I got at Dollar Tree and I am cutting it down so it's really narrow so I can make a bow. See my little tiny bow that I made from my wreath. I'm gonna glue this onto my wreath and then I glue my wreath onto the door and voila, it is done. And it is just, uh, I love little details like this. I just felt like it turned out so, 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 so cute. And I'm gonna use that exact same ribbon and I am going to hot glue some ribbon on the back so it just makes a little hanger for my project. And um, somebody on YouTube um, talks about, oh, I wish I could think of who it was, but they like to use hot, when they're doing something like this, they like to use hot glue in, com in combination with some masking tape and it just, it really makes things stick really well like this. And so I did that with this project and I'm telling you what, it is true. Like that hot glue and masking tape together, they just kind of like meld together and it makes that so secure on the back. Um, so I just cut out a piece of masking tape here and I just push it into that hot glue and it really, um, it really, really works well and makes it very, it just makes it adhere really strong. And um, I just um, tape those down and then I just kind of trim the edges so you, you know, obviously don't want to see it hanging over the back of your project. So I just take a little pair of scissors and just kind of cut off that little extra uh, masking tape, but that masking tape just gives it a little extra, um, you know, grip to make sure that that stays on. I'm gonna glue on my little wreath here. I could make these little projects, these little trucks, I could make them forever. I just have so much fun making them. I love all the detail. I just, they're just so cute, I think. Pulling off all my little hot glue hairs there. Don't you just hate those little hot glue hairs that you get when you're working with hot glue? Ugh, they drive me crazy. And now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take some jute. I put a little bit of masking tape around the very end of my jute, 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 <laughs> around the end of my jute, and that helps it so that it's really easy to weave through those tiny little holes. Um, I tried on the second one not to have to do it, but when I push my jute through, it just kind of frays the end of the jute. So I'm like, okay, I need to go back in and I need to put this little um, tape on the end of that jute. So it almost makes it kind of like a shoestring. You know, imagine if a shoestring didn't have this on the end and it was just big and fluffy and fat, it would really mess up the ends of it when you pushed it through the holes. But this just makes it so that that jute goes straight into those holes and it just, you know, it, it just makes it super easy to do. So just take the time to put the tape on the end of your jute. Um, it will just make this process much easier. So then I just tied this one on and I just kind of adjusted how long it needed to be to make sure that my sign was hanging evenly on both sides. Um, and this was like the last step in making this project. I. I am so excited about how this project turned out. Like I told you in the beginning, at the very end, I do show you my fall version that I did making a truck full of pumpkins. And let me know in the comments below which one you think is the cutest. I, I love them both. And I'm making several of these this year with, you know, putting them on different signs that I have, different, different like plaque backgrounds. And um, I'm just, oh, I love this project. I really hope you guys enjoyed this project. If you liked it, again, please give my video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye.